Welcome to 2021. This is Andy Gish from the Andy Insights channels on YouTube. And what a week. I mean, honestly, I was hoping 2021 was going to get better than 2020. And honestly, after that first week, uh, I don't know. Uh, these are two videos this week. The first one is on the virus spreading the world. And you really want to see that. Uh, it's very worrisome what's happening with the mutation from the UK and South Africa. And in the US, it's it's a carnage. Um, it's, we all got distracted this week, uh, but the numbers are staggering. Uh, we have 4,000 deaths for the first time we passed uh, yesterday. And the second video is critical. Uh, take a look at the uh, clinical video. We're gonna go a deep dive on what's happening in the UK and in South Africa why these mutations are concerning. And also we're going to talk uh, extensively on the vaccine rollout in the US and some of the challenges we're meeting. I was lucky to participate in several uh, biotech uh, webinars with some of the leaders in this field, and I'm going to be sharing some of their insights. So uh, let's get the show rolling. Uh, hello, this is Anne de Happy 21. Uh, this is Anne Insights. Uh, this is the first video on the epidemiology. Uh, these are two videos we're going to do this today on January the 8th, 2021, and you really don't want to miss them. Uh, the first one we're going to see about the, the destruction that the virus is doing across the country. And uh, the second video, which is a clinical one you don't want to miss, we're going to be talking uh, a deep dive on the UK in the South Africa mutation and uh, also a lot of information about vaccination rollout that I was able uh, to get from some of the webinars in some biotech leadership uh, conferences I'm attending this week. So let's take a look at what's going on in the world. Unfortunately, numbers are continuously to go up. We have 88 million cases uh, with uh, 1.9 million deaths. Uh, in the US, we got 21 million cases. We've passed major records, 300,000 daily cases. That's the highest ever. 4,000 people died yesterday. Uh, and we have, this is a big problem, 131,000 people hospitalized. So we're running out of ICU, especially in California. So we'll spend some time on that. But you can really see North America is driven by the US. Uh, Europe, through a high restriction, has been able to stop the growth, but it's not really going down. Uh, and you know, US, you can see this is a blip from the holidays. So you really should see the progression going upwards there. So let's take a deeper dive. To get perspective, we get all num with numbers. And I basically give you here the deadliest days in American history. A Galveston hurricane, a hurricane uh, had 8,000 deaths in one day. After that, COVID is really the top eight in the last 10. Uh, uh, yesterday, we passed for the first time 4,000 deaths. The day before, it was 3,900. Uh, this Tuesday was 3,770. We're clearly going in the right direction. So since I've talked to you, uh, you can see in blue are all the dates uh, where uh, we have broken records, over 3,000 there. So it, it, is, it is going to be really ugly. Uh, to give you an idea, the Battle of Gettysburg was only uh, 3,155. The San Francisco earthquake was 3,000. And 9-11 uh, was 2,977. So this is um, this on a daily basis. And I try to get perspective uh, because at time numbers becomes nothing. And, but these are real human beings. This is another perspective there. That if you look on the average since we had the first death, we have averaged 1,170 deaths per day over the last 9 to 10 months. Um, so the, the mortality uh, is unfortunately 0.1% uh, 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 of the American population now. So on a worldwide basis, since I talked to you, we've gone from 75 million cases to 88 million cases in the last three weeks, 1.9 million deaths, uh, still being driven uh, mostly by Europe and, and the US. Uh, on the worldwide basis there, you can see we still have some growth uh, driven by, by the US. Uh, the death rate is kind of flat on its on its growth there as we continue to improve how to treat patients. But the numbers are incredible. Uh, India passed 10 million cases. Brazil is at close to 8 million cases. And, and, and the US is at 21 million. So we're kind of number one in the world. Whoops, sorry, my computer is playing difficult. Um, so. The way to compare uh, the different countries is to look on the daily cases per million. And, and this is what's worrisome that we're going to be talking in both videos. You can see the UK has had that mutation. Look at their numbers. They've absolutely exploded. 
South Africa has had a mutation a few weeks later there. Um, and you can see South Africa is also going straight up. So that mutation there that we say 70% more contagious, you can see by the numbers that it's creating this explosive surge. And the big worry is that, you know, this mutation now has been into the U.S., at least the U.K. mutation is now 50 cases in the U.S. and significantly more that we haven't detected yet. And so as a result of that, the U.K. now has passed us. And you can see the U.K. was at the same level that Germany and France uh, like they see one or two months ago, which is around 200 cases per million, and they've quadrupled uh, due to that mutation there. So uh, that's that's something that uh, hopefully uh, doesn't have a huge impact on us. Uh, as a result of that, you can see uh, the difference between the first surge that was in the UK in the spring, and what the number of daily cases they're having there. You know, is a factor of you know six to seven x. Uh, um, and, and so the big worry in the U.S. is that that mutation coming to the U.S. and this never explodes. And I think our healthcare system will be overwhelmed if that's the case. So on a normalized basis, if you look on a case per million, you can see Europe has put some very strong restrictions uh, um, in places. And they have been able to control it, but they've not been able to really drop it significantly there. Where the U.S., we have this fragmented approach across different states. And as a result of that, uh, you can see that we continuously to go up. These two drops there are really due to Thanksgivings and the holiday season. So you should not pay too much attention to that and just look at the curve going straight up. Uh, so let's look at the UK mutation. Uh, right now, the mutation is in the southern part of England. And, and if you compare to the rest of Europe, it hasn't really invaded Europe yet. And you can see Europe is kind of flat in their growth. But clearly, uh, the UK is, is, is leaving the pack. And uh, if we look on the newly weekly cases per million, so to try to average out the day-to-day -day variation there, uh, the good news on the U.S. side is that the three weeks ago we went from 747 cases per million. We have dropped, you know, so there has been a slowdown in the U.S., which is good, not in California, but in some of the other part of the country there. So you can see we try to plateau here. Uh, and of course, what you can see is the U.K., which we talked about, Israel, uh, you know, are having a, a, an upsurge in other part of the world. Uh, let's look at the U.S. I want to spend a bit more time on the U.S. Uh, we have broken several daily records yesterday. I'm sure the same thing is going to happen today when it gets reported tomorrow. We now had 300,000 cases that was reported by the CDC. Uh, another website report 280,000, uh, but I think the CDC is probably more reliable. Uh, we have passed 3,800 or 4,000 deaths, depending on, on the website you're using there. These are all going the wrong direction there. These are seven-day averages, so it's kind of smoothing the curve. But we're still growing the cases at 15% per, per two weeks. And the number of deaths is still continue to rise. And hospitalization is the big worry. We're now basically creating uh, a, a situation there where the healthcare system will, is getting overwhelmed, which means mortality will go up. Uh, the U.S. dashboard, uh, you can really see the metrics, uh, you know, uh, our testing is not really uh, as good. It should continue to go up, so we're not doing a good job uh, doing the testing there. You're going to see that the positivity rate in the country has gone up drastically. Uh, the number of daily cases continue to go up. Hospitalization is a massive worry. And as a result of that, you can see the daily death is following. So California, Texas, New York, and Florida are driving the charge. Uh, you can see the number of cases are pretty high uh, uh, in those states is there, and they're the one that's really driving the growth in the country. Let's look at the hotspots in the U.S. It hasn't changed much since we looked three weeks ago. I compared the two maps. They're pretty much the same. You can see really in dark red the southern part of California and Arizona. And unfortunately, we start to see the, the heavy population at New York, New Jersey, and uh, we're basically going back up. And, and so, so these are, uh, this is the reason you can see the numbers here. The country as a whole in the last two weeks has gone up 6%. California has doubled in the number of cases in the last two weeks. Uh, and Tennessee uh, has also close to double there. But then you see some of the large population there like Georgia and New York and Florida, I still have some growth in there. If you look at the single day case record, which is the highest amount of cases, you, you still see the surge coming out there in the last two weeks that most of the, the, the states on the Northeast are starting to lighten up. So there's clearly a research upsurge on the, in the, the Northeast, as well as the South. Oops. 
uh, this is the big worry, ICU beds. And, and normally, so that you know, people want to see maybe 65% occupation of ICU beds so that we can provide the best care. And, and the way it impacts the care is that normally you may have one nurse taking care of two patients. It turns out a, a COVID patient requires so much help, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And now right now we have to kind of reverse and to do like maybe one, uh, maybe having less coverage by the nursing staff. And that's the problem here. It's not only the beds, but the staffing uh, is an issue. And you can see New Mexico is at 96%, so it's pretty much full. Alabama, Georgia, California, 85%. I'm going to show that number is abnormally uh, um, misleading there because it, the northern part of California is fine, but basically Southern California is at 0% uh, capacity right now in the ICU there. But pretty much, you look across the country there, everything is above the level that we want to be. The whole, the whole healthcare system is taxed. This is a great app and I'll put the link on the YouTube page. Uh, you can basically look at where you live and you can literally see uh, each hospital in your area there. You can see how many beds they have available and the occupancy rate. And this, I just picked the, 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 the North Bay in San Francisco, which is where I live. And you can see in the dark colors is the people with 0% capacity. And you can see that, you know, that we're having a lot of problems. Um, at Kaiser's at 99% uh, capacity, Seton is at 100%. We basically are, 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 maxing, are maxing out in the Bay Area, and, and we are much better off than Southern California. Uh, if we look at the regional cases per million there, uh, you can see it's not just Southern California, the whole country is having an upsurge. Here's the problem. Uh, the hospitals that we have built were designed to provide six liters per minute to an ICU patients of oxygen. The COVID patient's lungs are so damaged that they literally have to give 10 times more. And the pipes in the hospitals cannot provide that amount of pressure. And so what's happening in, 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 in Southern California is that they cannot get enough pressure to provide enough oxygen to patients. And they're starting to do selection of who gets access. They're moving patients to the lower floor so you don't have the issue of gravity to deal with. And they just announced today that the ambulance, the EMS, will only provide oxygen uh, to patients in the ambulance who have an, an oxygen saturation below 90% because we're also running out of can of oxygen. So it is a major concern because if you have no oxygen, uh, since I launched pulse oximetry 30 years ago, I can tell you you die within five minutes. And so, so that is a driver much more important than ICU and beds and staffing. Uh, as a result of the surge, the positivity rate, which is the amount of tests that turn out to be positive, has gone from 4% in Los Angeles in November to 17%. And again, it goes back to that slide I showed a bit earlier there. We have not increased the number of testing. We still have a huge testing problem across the country there. So we're totally underestimating the, the amount of people who are in the population there. So we have a lot of asymptomatic patients there who have not been tested positive, who are basically, uh, unfortunately, spreading the virus. Uh, so it's a big, big, big issue there. So let's look at California. We have had 1 million cases in the last four weeks. We've had a thousand deaths in the last 48 hours. And, and the numbers have gone drastically uh, since I talked to you. There's been some leveling off. So there's some good news there, but the positive rate now, uh, which was like around 7% uh, a few, you know, few weeks ago when I talked to you, has now gone up to 13%. Again, going back, it is everywhere, and we're totally under testing. So uh, why is that a problem there? Because as a result of that, Southern California in particular, in the San, San Joaquin Valley there, is overwhelmed. They have no capacity left, and, and the death rate has gone up drastically there. Uh, let's look at the ICU bed availability. As a state, uh, Southern California has 0% ICU availability. They have none. San Joaquin Valley is at 0%. The Bay Area, as I just showed you earlier, is barely at 3%. And the reason why California as a whole is a little bit higher there because the northern part of the of the of, of California there uh, doesn't have as bad of a surge, but it's a lower population, so there's not that many beds available. Uh, it's driven in California by the young population there. This is the people between the age of 18 and 55 years old uh, that basically are driving it. A lot of them are asymptomatic there, and unfortunately they pass it to their parents who pass it to their grandparents, and that's why we see that mortality surge. The Latino population is also being hit at a higher rate than the, they're mixing the population there. The main reason is that they are the non-essential workers who unfortunately get exposed much more than the rest of the population. So it has nothing to do with race. It's just based on their jobs and their population there. 
So I don't know how you feel about 2021, but a week ago on December the 31st, I had high expectation. And honestly, I'm a little bit exhausted in the first week. And so I'd like to officially cancel the subscription to 2021 because I've experienced the first free seven day trials and I'm not interested in renewing it. That's just a joke. I thought that after all these numbers, I needed to get a little bit something more optimistic there. So please uh, hang in there, go on, go on YouTube and make sure you see the second video on the clinical because we're going to talk about the mutations and the problem with the vaccination rollout.